afternoon. This is Rules and Open Government Committee for October 2nd, 2013. And we will begin with the review of the City Council agenda for October 8th, 2013. Other changes to page one. 203, 405, and page 6. Then we have a few um, additions. Um, presentation of proclamations recognized in October 9th as International Walk to School Day in the city of San Jose. Councilmember Campos traveled to Dublin, Ireland. Um, the mayor's travel to Washington, D.C., and Councilmember Roach's travel to Los Angeles. Motion to approve the agenda with the additions. Uh, how about w one, one more? One more in the back. Uh, and then uh, agreement with the National uh, Aeronautics and Space Administration Ames Research Center for the use of the Moffitt Federal Airfield. Same motion. Second. Okay. And we don't have any cards from uh, public, do we? Okay, great. We have a motion to approve the agenda for October 8th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse me, Vice Mayor. Yes. I just wanted with your motion to approve a waiver of the release of the NASA memo. Which item? That's the, uh, the 2X. 2X, on X the back. In, the, in the back. Uh, memo, that's so moved on the Sunshine. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion with the Sunshine waiver. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. October 15 um, City Council meeting is canceled, so we will review the uh, Joint City Council Board of Supervisors meeting, which is scheduled for October 18, 2013. And I believe you have the agenda yep. in front of you. Question, Vice Mayor. Yep. Uh, City Manager, this is just sort of when you met and agreed upon. These were the hot, hottest items you wanted to talk about. Actually, the homelessness uh, issue was uh, the one that uh, the city and the county staff uh, initially felt was the most important. That's a pretty broad topic. Since then, the county has expressed interest in the other two items. So, um, the uh, you know the mayor, at least for the from the city's perspective, is fine with that. I just don't think there'll be as much conversation about those. Yeah, issues. I would suggest that item A be like 90% of the meeting I think versus those other items are really sort of out of scope. Yes, and I think they're more in terms of update. Um, uh, board uh, member Jaeger was very interested in those two items, and, and they're really just more in terms of update. Okay, yeah, I just, just want to A should be 90% of the meeting. I right, agree. Fine. Thanks. Thank you. Motion? Uh, motion to approve the Second. agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We now move down to legislative update. Uh, Betsy's not here, so there's no update. Um, meeting schedules. We have uh, a study session scheduled for October 15, but I believe we are going to release that date. That is, is that correct. Right? We have no items pending. Okay. Do we need a motion to release the date? Motion to release. Second. Okay. Motion to release. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Public record. Are there any items that the committee wants to pull? Motion to note and file. Second. Some speakers, I'm sure. Yep, we have some speakers from the public who wants to speak on the public records. Um, Jeff Badola. To add to my earlier demand for notification of a council action, I would like to suggest for the council to add to the open council agenda a motion to request all, part, all concerned parties to discuss this in mediation and for both parties to the transaction to agree to deferring the finalizing of the land transfer, I mean the land, the land title transfer. I've dropped off copies of my statement of the points at issue. Please consider them. Thank you very much. Jim Piazza. Time and time, time, and time again, <coughs> I've repeatedly come to you guys 
And I've given you way more knowledge than you guys ever needed, and you guys already knew the knowledge. We all knew that you guys knew the knowledge. But when you guys are exposing TCE to eight, nine element uh, schools within a five mile radius with nine par, you guys took over this property. Don't you guys remember 20 years ago? You guys got lovely pictures of thousands and thousands of gallons of paint thinner and all kinds of other stuff. Again, just going right on nine par. Why are we still here, gentlemen? Again, why don't we do the full EIR? Again, why are we going to phase two EIR? Again, there's no warrant. There, I have come to this council time and time again, and time and time again, you guys have all ignored me and stuff. Well, what would you do if you had kids going to these elementary schools? Again, it is airborne. When you pull that stuff out, a hole, out of a hole, what do you think happens? It's right by the bay and it just goes in the wind. You know how much it travels, it can go miles. By the way, when the garlic festival is on, can't we smell the garlic? Yes, so what does that mean? What is it doing to TCE? It's spreading all the way around and we're just allowing it to happen. Are you kidding me? That concludes the public uh, records comments. We have Councilman Oliveira. Um, city manager, could uh, is there someone off there? Uh, Mr. Piazza has spoken several times at this public uh, about this TC and this property. Is there something that you can explain to the public very briefly, or is this a far too technical manner? Really, I'm not equipped to speak to it today. But if it's a committee's pleasure, we can uh, do a, a quick info memo, um, on or just a, a verbal update. The next rules, sure, whatever's easier. Be happy to do so. Okay, thank you. We have a motion to notify file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hear none. Motion carries. We have nothing under the board's commission and committees. We will now move to the uh, various items. The first one is, let's take two and three together. The uh, approval of the Hindu Awareness and Appreciation Month re reception as a city council sponsored special Can event. Second. And the other one is the uh, documentary showing on community gardens. We have a Motion to approve both. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. M move right along to item four, San Jose. Motion to approve. Second. San Jose, gun, by, back. <laughs> <laughs> Just want the public to hear that. Um, Council Member Accomplish, do you have anything you wanted to share with us? We don't have any questions. We have a motion to approve, though. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. The Chief, thank you, Council Member Campos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next item is the benefit clarification for returning uh, police officers. Uh, this, this is my memo. Um, it's been brought to my attention that we have uh, officers who are returning to the San Jose Police Department in the last few months, and uh, they will concern about whether or not um, they're being put it back into tier one or to tier two. And so I wanted staff to have an opportunity just to clarify some of the retirement benefits for the police officers who have and or will return to work with the city of San in, in the near future. And uh, Alex, I assume that you can provide an information memo for the council uh, so that we have the, the accurate information so that we can relay back to the officers if they contact our office or our offices. Yes, good afternoon. Alex Groza, Deputy City Manager. Yes, we'd be glad to do so. We can do an information memo that uh, lays out answers to the questions uh, that Vice Mayor you had in, in your memo. Uh, and we should be able to do it within 60 days if that if that's okay with the committee. That sounds If not sooner. Yeah. <laughs> if not sooner. Yeah. Okay. Is uh, that, do you need a motion? Yeah, be, I'd be happy to make uh, it. I'll make it. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd move approval. I just wanted to ask a question. Um, about this, I, I'm also interested in making sure that we get information out um, about what uh, our programs are, not only to returning officers, but to officers that are currently in our police academy and just making sure that we all are on the same page um, with what, um, you know, what our program is. Um, is it mm -hmm. possible that we can include that in, in this? Um, Vice Mayor, would you be? Yeah, I, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, I, I think that so it, I think there's a lot of yeah. misinformation and education is a big part of what we need to do to make sure that we all understand. It's it's understandable there's confusion because we're going through change. I mean, you only need to look at what's going on at the federal level and see lots of confusion about when you make changes. So 
I think we need to really do a good job in educating um, our existing um, police officers, the public, um, returning okay. police officers, all of that. Okay, great. Okay, so that's incorporated, um, and I look forward to seeing that memo. Alex, thank you very much. So uh, we have a motion to approve the recommendations with the additions. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Um, item six, medical marijuana. Uh, Council Member Don Rocha has a memo asking the Rules Committee to agendize an upcoming Council meeting at a, a staff presentation and Council discussion on the scope of work staff intends to pursue this fall on the medical marijuana issue. Motion to approve. Second. Um, so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think the, based on the schedule, I think October 29th would be the quickest since the 22nd's filled with the general plan uh, update uses and. Yeah, I would right. defer to staff on the yes, staff to the yes, I'm making the motion. I would defer to staff on the date. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Um, yes, we've been uh, act actually actively talking about this. We understand the pressure that the council and the community is under. Um, our staff have talked to Council Member Rocha and really support coming back and reframing this for you. You know, as acknowledged in the memo, there's been a lot of work. And so it gives us a good starting point. Um, in talking to staff, though, I, I do believe it's more realistic to be back before you, certainly before the Christmas break, and we would not let it go down to the to the wire, but uh, staff is uh, working on this in earnest, and so we will bring you back some policy options. Uh, I don't know if the council member has more to add. Uh, Angelique can certainly give you more headlines if you'd like, but we're, we're prepared to do this. Okay. Council Member Herrera? I think this is, is good to bring it back and just let council know what the options are. So that, that's why I'm supporting this. Um, you know, we last time we went through this um, brain damage on, on this issue, we weren't able to really get regulations implemented, but since the Supreme Court ruling, I think that, that really changes the playing field. Now we can come back and see what we can do, whether we want to ban, whether we want to try to regulate. So I think all options are on the table. In addition, I specifically would like to have input from staff on the cost and public safety services that um, we're incurring right now. I know we're taking in a certain amount of revenue, but how much are we expending in managing um, what we currently have out there? And also, what, what are the implications with schools? Uh, we're hearing stories about um, minors getting hold of uh, medical marijuana cards and selling them to other students in the school. So I want to understand the impact. So we, you know, revenue versus outgo, and then really take a look at what we want to do going forward. So we have a motion to approve uh, Councilman Rocha's memo. All in favor? All right. With, okay. with the it added direction that I just gave to yes, staff. Yes, with the added directions that you just stated. I imagine there'll be lots of directions. Yes. There'll be lots, but <laughs> we're on rules today, and that's my direction. Okay. Um, Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay, opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. That's great. So we're down to item seven, charter school development standards. And uh, we have a memo from Council Member Rocha and also the mayor. Um, I actually have a question, though. Um, this item was actually placed on the uh, council priority ordinance and policy initiative uh, council uh, sessions uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, and it received three votes uh, from 11 of us. So I'm not really sure if we should proceed um, with this and ask staff to devote more time. Obviously, um, this went, th went through the, uh, the priority session. It didn't get the votes that it needed for staff to take a look at this uh, at the level that it um, should. Um, so I don't know how this committee feels, but um, since the mayor's not here, Councilman Rocha obviously is here and he can speak to the memo, but that's my initial uh, reaction to seeing the memo and seeing what we have uh, gone through uh, with the priority s study I session. Have a, I have a question. Uh, obviously, we hear what Councilman Rocha has to say, but um, would it make sense to hear this again when the mayor comes back since he's not here to speak on why he might have signed that and supported it? Well, I, th I think that's... If it, instead yeah, of rather, you folks, if we're not going to if we're not going to move forward, if we're not going to move forward, and I think we ought to at least give the mayor an opportunity to come and speak why he was supporting it. This came about a, a memo that the mayor's office drafted and approached me on it. I think it, his initiative on this issue was based upon um, the county board of education actually agendized the memo that I provided at the last meeting, suggesting that we sit down and talk to the board of education with our staff and talk about some maybe guidelines that we want to look as these charters keep going forward. Um, so the board took it upon themselves to direct their staff to reach out to us. So based upon that, the mayor felt if another public agency is asking for our insight and support that we might want to consider that regardless of how that 
um, priority setting went previous to that knowledge. Uh, I'll defer to the staff to talk about their interest, but as I understand it, whether an item's on a list or not, if there's an ori original referral, if the issue itself warrants staff attention and time because they believe that there may be some issues that they want to be a bit proactive about, regardless if it's risen to the top, in some cases they may spend a little time on it because there may be an issue that they want to deal with. But again, I'm speaking on behalf of staff and I said I wasn't, so I'll stop there. But if the interest of this count of this committee is to wait till the mayor gets back so he can speak to his interest in the issue, I'm fine doing that. I'm sure just as I understand that he's going to be back at the next meeting? Yeah. Okay. That, that's up to you. But Motion to defer one week. <laughs> Second. Okay. Do you have a mo staff, do you have anything to add or we just wait? We can wait. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have a motion to defer this for one week. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. And we'll move along to item H, review of additions to council committee agendas and work plans. And we have uh, three items under the transportation and com environment committee. Uh, the South Bay Water Recycling Update on Strategic Planning Effort, updates on Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing Program, and the Long-Term Trash Low Reduction Plan. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And uh, nothing under open government, nothing. We are down to the open forum. Jeffrey Badola. Thank you. Introducing concerns regarding Prop 8. Uh, my copy includes quotation marks on some of the terms used. Recently, I've seen news stories about issues involving gays. Examples, what happens when two states differ as to recognition of a trans gender's self-identity of gender, what should happen about blood donation rules, and the question of jury duty challenges. What prompted me to think about this was a recent story in San Antonio involving a new law uh, involving both discrimination and religious freedom. I find the, the polemical climate of these kinds of issues unsatisfactory for the development of understanding. Since San Jose approved the resolution in support of the Proposition 8 challenge, and I'm not aware of any other venue for civil discussion, I feel it is important to do that here. And I would like to do so in a series of personal sharings. Two minutes is not enough. I invite the city councils to give thoughtful consideration to all sincere views to inform city policy. Thank you. Dave Hodges. Many of you know me, I was the founder of the first medical club in San Jose, the one who started all this mess. I just wanted to thank you for moving that forward and looking at an ordinance again. Things are definitely uh, out of control in San Jose. Um, I, I hate to agree with you that there is stuff going to kids in high school, but uh, unfortunately I've been hearing the same thing. Uh, our club has some very strict uh, age standards to try to prevent that, and we do everything we can, but in our, our current state, it's really the Wild West still. Um, we do have a <coughs> community ordinance that was started during the referendum period, which was actually a trim back version of your uh, Title 6.88. So I, I'd really encourage you to look at that and see what we tried to do back then and you know move forward in a positive direction. Thank you. Kelly Davis. medical marijuana issue kind of with the same feelings he is. I live in the Cambrian area of San Jose and I have two small children that are 10 and 8 years old and we have resells out in front of my house regularly and even though I go out and say can you please take your business elsewhere, they, people that are going to the establishments near my house, they don't care. They don't have, it's not their neighborhood, they're teenagers, it's not an issue for them but this is my street that my kids ride their bike on. <laughs> I mean, um, my, I would like, you know, I don't, the legalization of medical marijuana is not something that I concern myself with. The safety of my family is something I am very concerned about. I have nine 
well, Green Jean shut down, eight medical marijuana dispensaries within walking distance to my house. That means it would take me 10 minutes or less to get to any one of these dispensaries. Um, so I would love to see some regulations around them. Right now, the one closest to my house, their operating hours are from 9 to 12, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. And unfortunately, what happens is after they buy their medical marijuana, they come right in front of my house on my street and smoke it. So it used to be that that would happen between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., but now I can't even put my kids to bed, you know, with feeling safe that they're not going to be there while we're all asleep in our house. So just common sense regulations about number per district. Um, I don't think we need eight or nine within walking distance of our family neighborhood. Um, operation, you know, hours of operation, maybe some policies about reselling. I mean, I've talked to the people at the dispensaries near my house, and they're like, hey, once they walk out our front door, it is not our problem. We don't, whatever they do with it from that point is not our problem. Well, unfortunately, it is my problem because I've got kids and we live in a family neighborhood. It's the Cambrian area of San Jose. This is not an industrial zone. So um, I would just really, really implore the city. Sorry, to your time is up. This. Thank um, you. Gabriela Antalovich. Um, I'm with Voices United, a nonprofit that has been working with the schools. And in the school system, in the last two years, what has happened is that they used to suspend kids a lot more about alcohol. Now it's marijuana. And especially the associate principals of discipline are tearing their hair out because they don't want to suspend that many kids, you know. Um, and they don't have any services to be an interim to educate those uh, young people as well as the parents about marijuana itself impacting the teenage brain. And so what has started to happen is that young people are wanting to have zoning restrictions, you know, getting the marijuana dispensaries away from the schools, just like we don't um, sell shotguns next to a school. We don't have bars and clubs and selling alcohol near schools. Uh, and also we have restrictions on alcohol billboards. And so this comes into the same milieu, that it's about the youth. That um, what is starting to happen is that youth are being impacted by what adults have wanted to have. And so that's something you know we really hope that city council uh, is mindful of, the impact on the young people. That concludes the... I'd just like to add a comment for all the speakers. Um, whatever the council does when we do pass something, please don't sign the uh, thing to retract it because that's what we did last time. We passed an ordinance, but thousands of San Jose registered voters signed a petition to, to withdraw it. So I think that's we need to keep that in mind. Thank you. That concludes the open forum. That concludes the meeting. We are adjourned.